Hello guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Wacom Cintiq 22 HD drawing tablet. I've had this tablet for just over a year now, so I figured I probably have enough experience at this point to be able to give you some detailed feedback on it. You can probably guess this much, but as a disclaimer, this is not a sponsored or paid review. I didn't get this tablet for free, I bought it with my own money. Wacom did not just turn up in my inbox and say, hey, look at you up and coming YouTuber, let us send you a free tablet. That didn't happen. So as with all my reviews, this will be my honest and unbiased opinion on the product. So the Cintiq 22 HD is one of Wacom's older models, but it's still frequently seen in use. It first came out in 2012, initially retailing at around £1,600. It has a 21.5 inch LED backlit screen, displays a resolution of 1920 by 1080, and has a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1. The screen displays 16.7 million colours, hitting the 72% mark on the Adobe colour gamut. The bevel of this tablet is pretty big, taking into account the large amount of express keys, and takes the overall diagonal measurement of the tablet up to almost 30 inches, so it's worth double checking before you purchase this tablet that you have the desk space for it. And yes, these are words said from unfortunate experience. I ordered the 22HD from a UK company called Wex Photo Video, who I also bought my camera from. Again, I'm not sponsored or anything, but I do highly recommend them since the delivery was faster than anticipated and it was really well packaged. I got mine in a sale for £1,189, though generally they tend to retail currently at around the £1,300 mark. I don't have footage of the unboxing since I was far too excited to think about recording it, but the tablet came in a box inside another box, the overall parcel being big enough for me to climb inside. I know this doesn't say much because I am at least part hobbit, but please just humour me. Setting up this tablet was surprisingly easy, and I did it alone despite the instructions recommending two-person assembly. It took me approximately half an hour to put it together and get it connected to the computer. This tablet uses the same drivers as Wacom's Intuos range, so you shouldn't have any clashes if you already have one of those installed, but if you have other tablets installed you'll probably have to remove those first. This tablet is fairly heavy at 85 kilograms, but the stand is very sturdy and holds it well which is a relief after prior experiences with Wacom's other stands which didn't serve me well at all. Anyone who's used a 13HD or a companion may have had the same issue I did, where the stand spontaneously collapsed and threw the tablet off the desk. Let me tell you, my reflexes have never been as fast as they were in that moment, but I've had no concerns of that kind with this one, considering it's got a completely different stand, and it's also different to the Ergo stands that come with 27HD and later models. This one has four feet, the front two have rubber stoppers and the back two have wheels. With this, you can lift the front of the tablet and move it back across the desk with the wheels if you need to access the area in front. If you press hard on the front of the tablet, it will lean back very slightly, but that requires a lot of pressure and I've never had any issue with the movement in the wheels because the stoppers at the front hold it really well. The stand can also be leant back to allow you to work at different inclines. If you press the levers at the back in, you can push the tablet down into several different positions as far as a 65 degree angle, so if you prefer to draw on more of a horizontal angle or have a second screen you want to look at above the tablet while you work, that works really well. I found that there's no definitive click when you do this, so it can be a bit hard to know when you've got the tablet into the right position, but it doesn't move once it's there. As you can see, I tend to use my tablet on the 10 degree angle. The tablet itself, not the stand, can also be rotated into a 180 degree position to work on it in portrait format. I can't show you this since I've screwed my tablet to the stand and don't want to risk undoing it, but it's an interesting option to adapt to the ways that different people work. Putting this tablet on the stand was very easy, you simply hook it over the centre of the stand and you can screw it in place if you know you're not going to be rotating it. The silver areas you can see here are all parts of the stand, while the cables are connected directly to the back of the tablet. This means there is no risk of them intermittently dropping out, both due to the direct connection and because they're not placed in a way that you might accidentally lean your hand on them, such as in previous models. However, that does mean that if you ever have an issue with the cables, it will be more difficult to replace them. The 22HD comes with a USB connection, mains cord and a DVI connection. It should work straight out of the box on Windows, but if you have a Mac, you'll likely need to buy an extra adapter for it. While I'm speaking of cables, I did find once that the brick and the power cable slightly disconnected from each other to the point where the tablet wouldn't turn on and I hadn't actually touched it, so it just kind of come out on its own. So it's worth checking those occasionally because in my experience, unfortunately, the accessories that come with Wacom's tablets don't tend to stand up to the quality of the tablets themselves. 
The 22HD comes with 18 express keys, 9 on each side so it works the same for left or right handed artists. With my companion hybrid the express keys were only on one side so I had to set it up for left handed use and turn it the other way up to use the buttons with my right hand. So this makes it so much easier just having them on the left and right side automatically. These express keys can be set to pretty much any shortcut you want. On the back is a scroll bar which you can also set to your preference. I have mine set to zoom but it does behave differently in different software and for some reason it zooms much more slowly in Photoshop than it does in Paint or Sci. This is an issue that frequently pops up when applying tablet shortcuts so just double check your shortcuts in one program aren't going to do something you really don't want in another. Express keys are for me a very important part of the tablet since my keyboard tends to float around the desk depending on what space is available and it's much easier for me to use the buttons on the tablet for my process. The only downside I would say is that the express keys are the same colour as the rest of the tablet and are not illuminated so if your room isn't that bright you might find yourself fumbling for them a little bit. The on off switch is at the top on the back of the tablet which is a good location so you don't press it by accident. There are also three buttons on the top right for adjusting settings. The first will show you all of your current shortcuts including your pen button settings which is extremely useful if like me you are forgetful and you have no idea what any of the buttons on your tablet do even though you set them up yourself. The second button brings up the Wacom software for adjusting those settings and the third gives you options for brightness, colour presets etc. I haven't adjusted these much apart from changing the brightness because when the tablet arrived the brightness was turned up quite high. Personally I've had no issues with colour correction. What I see on the screen of this tablet is almost identical to what comes out when I print my products. And this may be luck, but for me personally I've never had any reason to get this tablet calibrated because the colour accuracy is already there. Now for the pen that comes with this tablet. Wacom only ever provide one pen with each tablet in my experience, which was the norm up until competitors started to provide two. This is likely because most competitors' tablets need the pen to be charged, whereas Wacom pens don't. So with the ones that need to be charged, obviously you'll want to be able to use one while the other is on charge. So with Wacom you don't strictly need two. However, for the price point of Wacom's products as a personal point, I think it might be a good idea or at least a nice gesture to include a second pen. After all, we all know how good us digital artists are at losing our pens. Wacom also do not include a tablet glove. These are not essential tools, but a lot of digital artists, including myself, like to use them to protect the screen surface from smudges. And again, it would be a nice addition considering that most competitors will send one with their tablets, even the ones at the lower price points. There was also no screwdriver for connecting the tablet to the stand, which is something that some others include. Obviously this isn't feedback on the tablet itself, but just as a note compared to what you get from other brands, I think that Wacom are lagging a little bit in the department of showing gratitude for customer loyalty because when you buy one of their tablets you just get the bare bones of what you bought. You get a tablet, you get the pen, you get the stand and the cable, so you don't get any other accessories or any bonus items and just I think that in comparison with the competitors that are popping up everywhere it might be nice for them to just put in something else as an extra but that's kind of just a personal standpoint. Now back to the pen. This pen is the same model that comes with the current Intuos models. It has a comfortable rubber grip and two buttons on the side that, like the express keys, you can program to whatever shortcuts you like. There's also the option of changing the small plastic ring at the nib end for a different colour. This may be useful if you work in a studio space where several artists are using the same model of pen so you don't mix them up, but you can't really see the colour until you're close up so I don't think it's really as useful as it could be. At the other end of the pen is an eraser which I'm pretty terrible at remembering to use but it's useful to be able to flip the pen over and erase it like you would a pencil. The stand of the pen can be used in two ways, whether you'd like to stand the pen up or lay it horizontally and when you open it up you can find 10 spare nibs and a little metal tool to remove and replace the old nibs. I only have a few left in here because I gave away the spares that I wasn't going to use to some friends. I personally like the felt nibs the best having tried all of them. They tend to wear down a bit more quickly than the plastic nibs but I personally find them more comfortable to use. I also, I don't know about this, but I also wasn't sure if the plastic nibs might damage the surface of the tablet more than the felt nibs. I couldn't say for sure what difference it actually makes, but I can say that after 13 months of everyday use the screen still looks like new, with no smudges, scratches or dead pixels. I've never felt the need to use a screen protector, not only because the screen felt comfortable enough on its own, but also because one, they're quite expensive, and two, I am so horrible at putting on screen protectors that I might as well just flush that money down the toilet. Speaking of the screen, the Cintiq's 21.5 inch screen is anti-glare textured glass. 
Apparently in older releases of the 22 HD, the texture was more obvious and many people found that it obscured the image too much. However, this has been toned down in newer releases and I personally have not noticed it. If you've used the 13 HD or companion lines, the screen feels very similar to those. But if you've had a 27 HD, from what I've heard because I've never tried one, apparently those tend to be smoother. I've found the level of texture on this screen to be just right for me. I personally struggle with really smooth screens like the iPad. I had to buy a screen protector to give the screen more of a texture because it felt too slippery. But on the Cintiq, I found that it's just the right amount that it feels like it has a little bit of grip on the pen and also it doesn't obstruct my movement, so it's quite a nice sort of balance there. The pressure sensitivity on this tablet is 2048 levels, which is actually pretty low compared to a lot of modern competitors' tablets, which can reach 8192. I have no experience using anything above 2048 levels, so I'm not really an authority on this, but you know, if anyone fancies sending me a tablet to try out, I wouldn't say no. But anyway, that aside, I've never really felt like I needed more levels of pressure sensitivity to draw, but having used an iPad and experienced the Apple Pencil, I would like more degrees of tilt sensitivity. This feels lacking in that department, but it is a model that came out seven years ago, so I can't really expect the features to match up to something that came out so recently. But considering Wacom do mention the tilt sensitivity on the description of this tablet, it's something that notably isn't really there in my experience. So the pressure sensitivity overall I find great, tilt sensitivity not so much. In terms of parallax, generally the cursor remains glued to the pen on this tablet. I've never had any real issues with it. In terms of cold hard numbers, okay, three times the pressure sensitivity has stopped working over the course of 13 months and I've had to either restart the computer or restart the software to get it working again and once the cursor has jumped an inch to the left when I connected my iPad as a second monitor and I'm not sure whether that was the computer getting confused or the tablet. So overall no major issues, I don't recalibrate very often and I just find generally there's no real issues at all with parallax and that for me is worth a lot because I don't want to spend my time adjusting the settings on my tablet, I just want to set it up and draw and I don't have the patience to be dealing with these issues. So yeah, that's great for me. A uh, massive plus is the fact that there is essentially no parallax with this tablet at all, which I'd expect for the price point, but yeah, it's, it's nice to just be able to draw without any worry of that. And it may look in the video like there is some slight parallax, for some reason it looks more emphasised on video recordings. Um, also, I do use a stabiliser in paint or size, so the cursor sometimes will look like it's lagging a bit behind the pen, but that's just my settings, that's not the tablet itself. In terms of feedback that I've heard from others or things that I've been asked specifically to mention, the screen does get a bit warm towards the top in the middle, but you don't really notice it unless you rest your hand deliberately there and you don't really do that while you're working on this tablet, so I haven't found it a huge deal. Also, some people have asked if this tablet is noisy, but in my experience, I haven't heard any noise at all from it. Now, the main con with this tablet for me has been the drivers. Everyone hates driver updates at the best of times, but Wacom can sometimes just go to a whole new level. On my last update, my scroll bar stopped working entirely, and when I reset it to the zoom shortcut, it started to work in reverse. So when I used to scroll up to zoom in, it now zooms out and vice versa for some unknown reason. This also seems to have triggered a layer move shortcut in paint tool side that I haven't yet figured out how to turn off. So this is not entirely practical for my process and Wacom's customer service is also not the best if you do have any problems. Pretty much once Wacom have your money, they're not really interested. This is just from a personal standpoint, my own experience and experience that friends have mentioned. But yeah, I've asked for help with a previous tablet in the past only for them to just keep directing me back to their help pages, which I couldn't find the answer on, which was why I emailed them in the first place. So I found that smaller companies would generally be more eager to help you. So if you have a problem with your tablet, unfortunately don't expect too much from Wacom's customer service. Overall, my experience with this tablet has been really good so far. Despite its flaws, it's been one of the best investments that I've made for my artwork. It's comfortable to use and it's really helped me to work faster. It's no exaggeration to say that this tablet is an actual joy to use. It just feels responsive. It feels easy to get the hang of and set up. It feels natural, which is what I want. I don't want there to feel like there's a barrier between me and my artwork. I don't want there to feel like there's a disconnect that I'm drawing on 
a piece of glass I want to feel like I'm just there and it's just me and my artwork which sounds kind of cheesy but you know what I mean so yeah drawing on this tablet just feels natural and very very comfortable and for me that is worth so much and honestly yes it was a lot of money and I still kind of sometimes think wow I spent that much money on a tablet but for me that is just worth a lot for the fact that I don't have to spend a lot of time fiddling with settings it just works straight off the bat it's simple intuitive and natural and I just love that so yeah overall this investment was a lot to consider but I'm really happy that I made that decision. So that's not to say it's for everyone because some people may not enjoy working with a screen this size or have any need for the express keys and the specifications are starting to show their age a little when put in comparison with some modern competitors or other models from Wacom's range. I would definitely recommend trying one out if possible before you drop a large amount of money on something like this because a cheaper alternative might work better for you if you don't mind not having the express keys or other features or if there's a feature on another tablet that this one doesn't have. The main reason that I picked Wacom over an alternative is because for me they have a proven track record in longevity. I've never had a Wacom tablet die on me, I've only ever replaced them, and so I decided to stick with what I know has a proven record of lasting. So like I said, I have no experience with cheaper brands, but that's the reason why I particularly went for this tablet. And that's not me saying this is definitively better than those other brands because I have no benchmark for comparison, but that's my personal reason. But yeah, I wanted something that would last and I'm hoping that'll be the case. So in a few years, hopefully I'll be able to get back to you and give you an update on that. I hope this video was useful to you. I've probably missed something, I always do. So please let me know if you have any questions and I will try to answer them as best I can. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.